Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Savage Saturdays. I'm your host, Derek Whitehead. Joining me, as always, the man behind the cameras and lights and computers, it's Owen. It's me. How you doing, Owen? Doing great. That's good, man. That's good. Check it out, guys. Today's show is sponsored by Raycon. Everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds, but before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon. Now, a lot of you who have been listening to the main Drinking Bros podcast over the years have already heard and know that Raycon earbuds started about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market and that they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. Their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice, noise-isolating fit. Unlike some of other wireless options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet with no dangling wires or stems. I'll tell you what, man. Ross told me about these earbuds back when he came to Vegas. I was hanging out with them. I think that was during SHOT Show. It was SHOT Show, yeah, January. Yeah, SHOT Show, and that's the first I heard about Raycon wireless earbuds, and it just so happens at the time, I was on the market for some new earbuds, right. and um, I, I, I trusted them. I went with it. I got, a, I got a set of the E25s, and I was skeptical, man, because they are, when they say they're discreet, they're discreet, and um, my problem is personal because I don't know if you've ever really looked At my ears, I have really dumb shaped ears. I've had trouble with headphones and earbuds (laughs) my whole fucking life. Got them German ears. They're just stupid shaped ears. And I've made matters worse by putting these inch large gauges in my ears. So I was just, I was with no real, I don't understand how they did it. Because with no way to externally secure the earbuds, I just, I didn't know if they would be able to stay in because I list, I use earbuds while I'm working out. Yep. And so, but I, I, I trusted Ross and I got a pair and I took them for a spin out in the garage and I, I was impressed, man, because they did not, they did not fall out. They didn't move. I didn't have to adjust them. That was my main concern was having to adjust these earbuds during right. my workouts. But I took them for a spin on the ski erg, which has a violent up and down motion. I took them for us. Um, you know, I was doing butterfly pull-ups and burpees. Yep. They, they they fit. They don't so move. They, they have the Derek Whitea seal of approval. The uh, the the Raycon E25 earbuds. So now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15 percent off all your order at buyraycon.com slash Saturdays. That's buyraycon b u y r a y c o n dot com slash Saturdays. Nice. All right. All right. Let's get into it. Yeah. What do what you are- want to talk about today? Oh man, I want to talk about my feelings. Let's do I, it. Let's just let's just hit them with the fucking D. You know what, man? I'll just I, I made a mistake the other day. I didn't realize. So these these episodes go up on YouTube as well. The videos are up on YouTube. Yep. And uh, people can leave comments. Oh. On YouTube, and there was a fucking there was a I read a nasty comment. It wasn't nasty. It was just you know it's just like. I, I, are you a nasty commenter? Like, if you don't like some, something or somebody, do you go and fucking tell them? I don't, I don't put the effort into moving past that thought. It pops into my head, and I'm like, eh, I feel like shitting on this idea yeah. or whatever, yeah. and then I just move on. Anyways, I saw a comment on one of our episodes. I can't remember which one it was, but somebody said something to the likes of, I've put enough time into Derek. It's always the same thing. I can't take it anymore. I'm out. <laughs> Later. And you know what? I was like, <laughs> is it always is it is it always the same thing with me? I I, I think it, if anything I'm not repetitive or no? maybe sometimes like it if we have in my line of work like fitness it is fucking repetitive. It's oh, yeah. bodies don't change. No. And and it and, takes and time. It's we have to, I have to answer the same question 1000 times and that's that's stressful for me too. But yep. I was like, man. And so anyways, uh uh but that's just one person. You know, that's just one person. And so uh, uh, I was I was a little bit, um, I guess, anxious about today's topic because today's today's topic is I wanted to talk about today. We'll just call the topic depression, depression, how to live with depression, how to thrive with depression, how to how to how to how to make it through depression. I thought I thought the timing was fitting because you, and, you and I for the last week have just been 
pieces of shit. Oh yeah. Like, you know, it's like one day I'll text you. Bad like, mood. Hey man, do you want to, you know, we should probably do some work. Do you want to do this? And you're just, and you text me and you're like, I'm going to funk. And I'm <laughs> like, no fucking worries. I'm going to funk too. Yeah. You know, I've, um, um, and I've, I've, I've lived with depression my entire life, you know, 15, 16. Right. You know, I, you know, we, I was I started um, getting therapy when I was 17. The army was a good band aid. Right. For my mental health. It, it just sort of like, it was, um, it skirted around when all of a sudden feelings aren't a thing. Right. Then feelings aren't a thing, you know? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And the army uh, has you, a good way of taking out of like you having extra time to sit around and think about stuff. Yeah, like they give you the place to show yeah. up and what you need to wear. And you know, they, 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 you know, like emotions are weakness and yep. things like that. So, and I, and I bought into all of that, you know, I wasn't smart enough to under to see through that. Mm -hmm. I just bought into it and maybe I was running away from myself or something like that. But you know, um, what happened to me happened and, and that just sort of like, it was gasoline on a fire. And, uh, I'll tell you what, man, I, I, whereas I've been open over the years, I, um, I think I get misunderstood sometimes as complaining or trying to get sympathy or pity Right. And I, I, um, it is sometimes I'll share something because it's almost therapeutic for me or like, so why do I talk about my depression so much? Mm -hmm. Am I fucking attention seeking? Am I trying to, it's, it's not, it's not that, but it, I understand how it can get seen as that, you know? But so I would say sometimes it is therapeutic for me to just confess hundred percent right? confession. I agree. Confession, you know, and sometimes get it out of you. Like, yeah, like, you know, so like I appreciate the people who follow me on Instagram and Facebook and things like that because and when I do, they're always um, so supportive and understanding. And, and honestly, it's one of the most relatable topics I ever talk about, you know, because it's like I'll do I'll talk about fitness, but not everybody who follows me works out or, right. or I'd make a joke. And now everybody thinks it's funny, but everybody understands feeling sad <laughs> you know? every motherfucking buddy understands feeling sad and for you know for some reason i don't i don't like to use the word you know like you know is there a stigma on mental health or some a stigma uh like stigmas on mental health or something like that you know i i don't know i'm not i'm not afraid to talk about it i like talking about it and i'll tell you it's probably one of the most asked questions i get a in, lot of in, comments in, about it in my messages, you yeah. know, and I'll tell you, I'm going to get some water here. I need to slow down when I, I'll start. So like when I'm in like a therapy session or something, when I'm talking about this topic, I get like super hyper and I get very sweaty. I'm going to uh -huh. be soaked by nice. the time. It's going to be super yeah. hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> we got lights going. We got the door closed and we got yeah. Derek sweating in the corner. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Um, I, it's, it's funny. I, I get this message in my, uh, I only check messages on Instagram. Really. I don't like the Facebook messenger platform for, yeah. uh, like my public Facebook page. It's right. shit. It's trash, but I'll, I'll, I'll go through messages on Instagram and help people out and things like that. But people who ask me about depression, I just fucking, I never respond. Really? Yeah, I don't because, and it's not because, but it's because, and it's not because I don't care. It's not because I'm annoyed. It's not because the only reason is I don't have a fucking answer. Right. I don't have a fucking answer. And it's a, or if there is an answer, maybe it's for a place like this hour long podcast, because how the fuck am I supposed to, people are like, Derek, like I'm at, I'm at the, you know, I'm at my wits end here. I just, I can't, I can't focus. I can't. I'm not working out. I'm not eating good. Everything sucks. I, I'm hopeless. Yeah. You know, and when, 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 when you're hopeless, that's true. That's, that's, that's real depression. That's, well, you know, and, and answering those questions via basically a text message through Instagram yeah. is like, so, you don't know where, what mood they're in at yeah. that moment or, and they'll, they'll, they'll try to ask like a, they'll try to, they'll, they'll give me their story and then, you know, make a concise, clear question. And they'll say, what do you do? When you're depressed and I, okay. I, it's like, it's too much for me to think about on command right. at any given time. Maybe one, cause I don't want to think about it or two, if I had to think <laughs> about like, what do I do when I'm depressed? Like, I don't fucking know, right. but we'll try to talk about it here. So maybe this is kind of like, what do I do when I'm depressed? Because right. I've been, I've been very 
you know, I'm always kind of teetering back and forth a little bit, you uh-huh. know, but I've been, I would, you know, and I told Stacy twice in the last week and I was just like, I'm, de- I'm, I'm going through a depression right now Yeah, where it's like, I've had a headache for four days. Cause you know, when you, you know, uh, for me, when I get, when I get real depressed, like where I'm, are we good? Yeah, no, we're good. Yeah. When I, when I get real depressed, it feels like there's fucking a belt around my head and somebody's just tightening it, you know? So um, and so maybe I'll, I'll think about, um, what, what, what I've been going through the last week a little bit. And I know that, um, and, and at no point am I complaining. I don't give a shit. Like I accepted that this is my life a long time ago. Right. This is and a condition of my yeah, existence. It's a, it, yeah, for real, you know? And actually that's one of, um, um, the biggest things that happened to me a long time ago with, um, you know, kind of my. Um, dealing with depression, uh, for, for the longest time when, 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 so, when you're depressed, typically when a person's depressed, they, they feel bad because, or not only are they depressed about something and, and the truth is we rarely know why we rarely know why we're actually depressed, right? It's hard to know. We don't understand our brains as well as we think we do. There's we, some subconscious yeah, there's trigger, a lot of shit going on, right? you know? And, um, but um, a lot, uh, it's easy to get frustrated for being depressed at all, you know? And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden you're just like, I'm fucking broken and how, how I can't fix my shit. Sometimes like you can't fix your depression, right? Sometimes you just have to ride that motherfucker out, ride the light. There's no off switch or something like that, you know? And so one of the best things I did is, um, you know, when I was, you know, maybe like 24 or 25 or so, I just accepted it. Mm-hmm. I accepted it and I just, and you know, I, I, and ever since then, it's just like, oh, I'm a person that struggles with depression right. and thoughts of suicide. And there's no fixing that. There's no, there's no changing that. There's no way it'll ever be different. How did, how did, I guess, coming to that or, or like making that statement to yourself, um, how did that change how you felt about it the next time the depression came on? Dude, acceptance is a beautiful thing, right? You know, acceptance and it, and, and, and well, let's say I, I remember because, you know, I went through like a 30 day inpatient program and then mm-hmm. I was seeing a psychologist and a social worker every, uh, every week for about a year after that. I mean, I was going through a lot of treatment, you know, and I just was stressed out because I couldn't get, my shit on track. We're constantly trying to fix it. I know I was constantly trying to, and and other people were trying to fix it. Right. And you know what? And I just said, Hey, I think this is who I am. Okay. Now I know this is who I am. I'm not going to waste time trying to fix that anymore. How do I live with this? How do I live my best life with this? In spite of it, despite it, like it's right there along with me. But now it's, and it's, and it's, and it's, it's, it's that same thing that we say all the time. I've said for years, it's like, it's, it's about not focusing on, don't focus on what you can't do, focus on what you can do. So it's like, okay, I can't change the fucking chemicals in my brain. Right. Cause it's like, for me, uh, the most minor in, I'm dramatic. I'm, <laughs> I'm dramatic, you, think? you know, like sometimes when Stacy says, Derek, you're being dramatic. I'm like, yeah, hello. <laughs> hello. That's fucking who I am. Have I'm you- dramatic. Hi, I'm Derek White. Nice mm-hmm. to meet you. <laughs> but I can't, I can't control that. I can't control that inner response, you right. know. And for the longest time, the most minor fucking thing would just make me go right to suicide. Okay, you know, yeah. if it's the the most minor, overwhelming thing, you know, paperwork having huge a overreaction, a huge, huge overreaction for right. real. It was just a huge overreaction, and now, like, I still get like really fucking worked up anxiety about things. Yeah. But, um, after fucking a decade of, of hard work, suicide is no longer my comfort blanket. Right. I still have, you know, um, I, (laughs) then the last week I've thought about it a lot, honestly, there's a few steps in between it coming on and killing myself. Yeah. But back then I would get really overwhelmed where I would just like fantasize about suicide. Fucking just, I mean, I would, I would get into it. I couldn't stop my train of thought. Yeah. Back then, you the know? downward spiral kind of, I can like, I'll go through one fantasy when I, when I like, I'll sit there and fantasize how I'll do it. But then I'll just, now I can catch myself and be like, no, 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 no. Don't think about that. Right. But then I kind of go back and forth. So it's the, how you do it, which is what you kind of spiral on. Yeah. But I, okay. I guess, I guess, um, 
there used to be a lot more emotion attached to it. Mm -hmm. Like I would really enjoy, I really enjoyed the, fantasizing about suicide, the planning it a long time ago and, and just doing it. But, um, did you ever think about the after part? Like what happens after you were successful? Like, okay, now like what's well, the only, the only after part that I'll ever consider and stuff like that is how do I make it as easy on my family as possible? Okay. <laughs> you know, like in what way will they not have to find my body or right. something like that? And I, but the thing is I can't, I can't, I can't control those thoughts from entering my mind because okay. there's no, there's nothing, you know, it's not like we can't control our thought. We can't control thoughts that come into our mind, but we can control how we react to them, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and so for the last week, um, you know, and it's not too often anymore that I really think about suicide like I, like that. Right. But, um, in the last week there's been a couple nights for maybe an hour or so i just i can't stop thinking about it and I'll, and, and Saturday, for about for about a week right yeah so okay obviously and, lots of stuff going on in the world right sure, now that kind of yeah, like that's, and that's the thing man like one of the things that makes me most depressed a lot of times is i just don't like the world that we live in yeah. i get i but it's, it's my mistake because i focus on the bad things right there's plenty of good shit tons there's of good plenty shit plenty of good shit but it's but it's easy to just see the bad things going on and i just if i lose faith in humanity that's what makes me depressed right you know <laughs> right and and also you know um I, and i think everybody's going through a little bit of something oh, well, a lot of people sure. are going through a little bit of something right now and i'll tell you here's here's one thing man um the 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 lockdowns the coronavirus covid19 life's different for a lot of people for me um it, it's affecting me mentally Mm -hmm. You know, but I haven't, I haven't lost my job. I'm still able to work out at home. We are, we, you know, we still have our childcare, our lives, you know, we're not affected that much. So and a, a lot of times people would, I, you know, here's, here's when we're talking about mental health, here's a fucking argument. I fucking hate. It's like somebody has it worse than you, you know? So like right now somebody's fucking dying from this disease and I'm sitting here feeling bad because of how it's impacting me and it's right. like oh that just woe is me but that I, just minimizes your feelings which is that's that's so that's that's one thing it, if somebody's listening to this and you haven't learned this yet that's one thing i want you to understand is like your feelings matter to 100%. you because They're you're real. you're feeling them somebody somebody who has it worse you know so somebody you know i'm missing a leg and people are like well there's people out there that are missing two legs and i'm like well fucking that's not me so I don't give a fuck, you know, That's not me. It, you know, if, and if I was, if I was that person, I'd fucking deal with it. And if I was missing two arms and two legs, I'd fucking deal with it. But this is my situation yeah. and this is how I fucking feel about it. And I'm the one who has to live with me. It's so, funny. You say that, that it's not me. I've caught myself over the last week. I'm, I'm a generally pretty empathetic person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes almost at an extreme level where like, I'll think of somebody in a bad situation and, and I can, I can really make myself start to feel what that person's probably starting to, to feel. Mm -hmm. And I've caught myself kind of downward spiraling on stuff like that to where I'm like, it's not me. And, and that's, it's, it's been my kind of stopping mechanism for continuing down thinking that path where I'm just yeah. like, Whoa, don't, that's not my problem. That's not, yeah, that's not me. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that. Let me get back to worrying about my own shit. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's very true. Um, for, um, for as man of all, of all the things I'm most surprised about myself, my level of empathy mm -hmm. surprises me the most. Yeah. <laughs> you know? because I think, I think secretly, I, I bet a lot of people don't understand how much I actually have, right? you know, because I'm just, usually I'm just fucking off. Yeah. You know, but I'm actually, I actually care. Secretly, uh, yeah. I just <laughs> like maybe, maybe that's a mask I wear right? or something like that, you know, defense but, um, mechanism or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But every like shit affects people in weird ways. And, 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 uh, um, here's, uh, talking about a couple things. We'll get into some of the things that I do or think or have learned over the years that helped me get through the hard times. But I, I want to start a dude. I thought of something so cool the other day. Okay. It just happened naturally and randomly. And it was just, I was, dude, I was like, 
They're like, I mean, in the last week, like I would, I've just sat there on my bed staring at the floor. Yeah. For hours. We talked about and that. And I can't yeah. fucking stop my head. And then I'm, I'm mad at myself because I was like, I want to get up and go do the dishes. I just wasted I six just, hours. I want to get up and go do something, but I fucking can't because mm-hmm. I'm overwhelmed. My head is just a fucking war zone, you know? And I, and I just, I, I, I heard myself say in my head, I'm at the end of my rope. I said that to myself okay. in my head. I said, I'm at the end of my rope. And then my inner dialogue went like this. I was like, what a stupid fucking thing to say because I've said that before, you know? And then right. I had this like image in my, um, did you ever have like an Apple II computer? Oh yeah. So do you remember that game where you would swing from vines? Uh huh. Yeah. So it's like, that's what came to my head. It's like, I'm, I, and so from now on, I'm not going to say I'm not at the end of my rope. I'm going to say I'm at the end of a rope. This and it's rope. just about swinging and finding a new <laughs> rope. And I think that's what's hard talking about depression with other people when they're like, Derek, what do you do? I was like, there's not a one size fits all fix right. for depression. It's always fucking there. Are Too many it's variables. quite often different. You, and, and, and maybe certain coping, coping mechanisms will work for me for a year or more. But at some point you have to find, I have to find new ways to deal with, my depression right um because maybe it's just because certain details in my life have changed you know so i i when i when i thought about that i um you know it was a negative thought that turned into something hopeful you know it's like okay i'm not at the end of my rope i'm at the end of a rope and all i need to do is find a new fucking rope yeah and then all of a sudden you just remember that there's things you can do you know um there's there's always always an option and all yeah there's always something the thing with being on the end of the rope end of my rope is that you feel like you're optionless like there's nowhere to go there's nothing to turn to there's no solution And and that's where that's where it crosses the line to disorder right and if you get stuck there you're so f- I was stuck there for probably like two years where I was just hopeless Ugh. when you're hopeless and you think there's no options yeah. and you can't see other options and you're just like narrowed in on like that. That is, that's when we cross into the world of disorder. So right. it's like everybody needs to know how to fucking cope with depression because everybody will face some sort of level of depression, you know, because circumstances happen like right. life circumstances happen. But I, I do believe in the difference of degree when we talk about mental illnesses and things like that, especially mm-hmm. with like anxiety, you know, cause it, it, it's, it's tough to talk about for me. It's hard to um, validate anxiety now because of all the fucking 18, 19, 20 year old kids who are like, I got anxiety. I can't do this cause of my anxiety. And they just throw that fucking word around. And on the one hand, I understand right. because it's a fucking natural human response, anxiety. Right. Right. But the way they use it to me seems like an excuse to get out of shit. I mean, why the fuck are 14, 15 year old kids talking about their anxiety? It's like, yes, it's real. So, like, is it a good thing that they're aware of it or is it a bad thing? Because it's giving them I think I think it's making them weak. You right. know, like I, okay. I, I don't know the answer here. I'm just, yeah, yeah. I, this is how spitballing. I, so now, but now for me, it's like, oh, I'm having anxiety about this. I feel stupid saying that out loud as a grown man, because that's something a fucking 19 year old kid complain. I have the same complaint as a 19 year old kid. And I don't know. You just, you just cast a different shadow on, on the term from your own preconceived like beliefs about it to where you're yeah. like, oh, I can't say I have this. But I, yeah, you do. There's a yeah, and so it's like I don't want to invalidate anybody. Everybody, right. you know. So, but I guess even a lot of fucking a lot of people use it as an excuse or a cop out. Or sometimes I, um, it's tough. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's fucking pieces of shit out there, and so oh, maybe totally. let's not even fucking focus or worry about the pieces of shit. Right. That's a mistake I make quite often, as I let other people impact how I feel or think about something. You know, uh-huh. so, um, so excluding them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get, my mouth is dry and I'm just nervous. So anyways, you know, uh, uh, just, just sort of ad- admitting it and feeling like just, just know that there's always an option. Like if you if you catch yourself feeling hopeless or you feel like there's no options, that's your red flag. And so for me, I have a lot of red flags 
where, where, you know, I'll just be sitting around thinking, you know, or just like I'm driving my car. And if, yep. a, if a thought comes into my head and I recognize that as one of my red flags, I right. stop. I'm like, oh, you need to pay attention to your shit, Derek, because right. you're on the verge of of a fucking collapse. Okay. Right. So like you need to know, you need to understand what your red flags are. And you, like you, you only, you can only learn what they are by paying attention. I mean, in all of this, uh, I guess most importantly, uh, if you're listening and you're like fucking, you struggle hard with depression and you have for years, if you have never had professional help, that's a fucking mistake. That's a fucking mistake. That's a fucking mistake. mistake. You grown ass men need to fucking hear this, okay? And I'll tell you what, like we, it's some. I here's the here's the stupid thing about the stigma with depression is 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 a lot of men are like they're still too proud to go get fucking help. And you know what? I'll tell you this: a a weak it it doesn't it's not a weakness for a man to 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 go to a psychologist and say I'm fucking sad. I can't concentrate. I'm not taking care of my shit. What the fuck is going on? How can I get better? Right. That takes strength. Yep. That takes so much fucking strength. That's probably one of the strongest things you'll ever fucking do. Like seriously, but it's still associated with weakness. And so I associate like people. So for men who associate that with weakness, I associate them with stupidity. Mm -hmm. I think they're fucking dumb. And just like, they just don't understand stubborn in denial. Don't understand what it means to be human. Uh, because they're, <laughs> it's just dumb because they're in it. I mean, it starts off with their in denial right. because everybody fucking feels okay. But like, but you, um, oh, you have to understand there's a difference in degree with all this shit. When it tips to the point of disorder, that's when you're definitely in trouble and you need to go get help. Yeah. And at that point, getting help will probably one of the, be one of the most difficult things you can ever do. So we're talking about if you're in that hopeless um, if, if, if you feel hopeless and you feel like you have no options, you need to stop what you're doing and go get fucking help. You are now your number one priority. Right. And I, you know, it's like, um, that's, that's, I'll, I'll share that. That's one of, that's been one of my best tricks over the years that I learned when I'm, when I got red flags going off, Yep. everything stops. The world is fucking dead to me because if I continue I, or like when my red flags are going off, I have to stop. I, I stop and I address my shit like a timeout like before. Yeah. A timeout on yeah. life. And, yep. and I mean, for real. And it's like, and I don't, I don't care what I miss. Right. You know, if we have a deadline for work and I miss it, I don't give a shit because right. there's nothing more important to me than wanting to not think about killing myself all the time. <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> like right. Anything else can wait. Literally to me, Anything else can wait. And, yeah. and and that might be seen as selfish, but um, I, I don't, I mean, I think it's necessary. And so I've learned how to unplug from the world and it usually only takes a day or two. Right. It, maybe it even only takes a night. Because but, of practice, because of how, because of how long you've been dealing with it, because of how many times you've had to like snap yourself out of it, you think, or just generally like. Or you like, just, it just depends on how bad the feelings are, how right. strong they are, how okay. long I've been putting them off and things like that. I'm just, I'm saying it, it doesn't take, I mean, I'm not checking out a life for a week. That's in itself a depression, right. but just like a nice little fucking reboot. And then yeah. it just seems to happen where I will find my way back, mm -hmm. you know, just by relaxing. Sometimes the best thing you can do for yourself is unplug from the world and rewatch, um, friends. Not think sometimes. So there, there, there's a, there's the, there, there's a tip unplug, unplug. And then when you unplug, sometimes one of the best things you can do when you're uh, depressed is not think you have to not think you have to. So I've learned that I can't trust myself when I'm depressed okay. because how I am when I'm depressed is not how I want to be. Right. Sometimes it's um, a depression is your your brain's way of telling you you're not living a life you want and sometimes you have to you have to at least consider it okay you know but you have to you have to learn to not listen to yourself i don't trust myself never make a decision when you're depressed <laughs> oh, that's oh. that's how you fucking end up like you know like a britney spears haircut right that, that decision was made while she was depressed <laughs> that's a depressed decision you know Void like, all decisions made mm -hmm. for the next three days mm-hmm but you can't trust yourself. And so, and it's, and, and, um, 
and if and if you kind of um, learn these things for yourself, you can recognize it easily in other people. Where and you just want to tell them, or I just want to say sometimes, hey, unplug. I know you're fucking depressed and stressed because you feel overwhelmed. Right. But you feel overwhelmed because you're depressed and stressed. You have no clarity. You have no. You're unable to think. You know, like the weird thing about this shit is it compounds on itself you know like depression makes you stress right stress releases um, cortis- cortisol? cortisol yeah cortisol shuts down your prefrontal cortex yep. all of a sudden you can't actually you can't problem focus. solve you can't focus yeah. and it's just it's so that's what i mean like on fucking plug and i when i when i unplug i don't do anything that requires me to think like i don't read mm-hmm. you know because i don't want to think my my I'm rebooting my brain because right. like all those chemicals are in my brain. Okay. So like when you're depressed, like the chemical balance in your brain is yep. different. And you, that's what I, when I say riding out of depression, what I mean is like getting that balance back naturally just by relaxing. Right. And then once your fucking shit has sort of, um, you, you can think clearly again it, and it's once funny. you've burned off all the extra cortisol in your brain. Yeah. So it's funny. And I'll tell you a, a personal story. So like the last week I've been a fucking depressed piece of shit. And I told you the other day about, you know, it's so funny that my, my dreams and goals and fantasies when I'm depressed, I want to quit fitness. I want to <laughs> drink all day and I want to make music, you know, <laughs> and I want to paint and I want to make music. And I told you, yeah. I said, I got to shut that shit the fuck down. <laughs> And no but music, I, but no that's painting, what, but that's what, that's what I do when I'm depressed. And so on the one hand, I need to pay attention to that. Cause obviously that's something I want to do. Right. But, um, it kind of feeds that not, bad feeling, yeah, but it's not healthy for me. But so it's, it's obviously something I want to do. So pay attention to it, but shut the fuck up because it's only going to make me continue to be depressed and what what makes me happy is is being healthy being fit being active right that's my that's my main coping mechanism in life is being healthy and active which you got backtrack into like when you were 17 and first started dealing with depression or, or however old you were around that time frame you're the the guy who you went to go get help from was like you need to work out my first psychologist that was the advice he gave me is like you know i said it like this is like he was like, hey, kid, you got a lot of emotions. Maybe you should go fucking exercise, you know? And you took that and ran with it. Yeah. And it was and, ever since. And now yeah. fitness is, is a huge part of everything that you do. Mm-hmm. Between then, how long was it between then and when you decided uh, what you were just saying, where you owned the depression? You're like, this is just how I am. This is a condition of my existence. Probably like, like seven, eight years, something okay. like that. Yeah. So mid 20s or mm-hmm. something when, yeah. when you kind of figured that yeah. part out. Mm hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And that and that changed your coping of it. Like how? Like, just once I, I accepted it, I just, I, I felt better about it. Yeah. And be, or so like accepting the fact that I'll always be that way. And I've had people tell me and even like psychologists and things like that, or, you know, I'll have new psychologists now and be like, look, I like, I, I'm not here to change that. I'm not here to never be depressed again. I'm not here to never think about killing myself. I'm here to learn how to live while thinking about killing myself. Right. How do I navigate? Depressed. Yeah. How do I and, ride and, this? And not everybody agrees that you can't fix that, but I don't give a fuck because for me, like just accepting that and I don't, there's nothing wrong with it. Right. Like I don't judge myself negatively for it. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not ashamed. If a dude wants to make fun of me, I fucking know yeah, fuck inside that, that I'm still a dangerous fucking guy and I'll probably be <laughs> beat the shit out of him. Like for like, I won't get in any fights anymore, Right. but I'll definitely consider just spitting on him. Right. Like that's, I really want to just, <laughs> sometimes I just really want to go up to someone just like, <laughs> you know, like right in their face, you know? So, you know, talking about being sad, like, I, like I said, I'm not embarrassed. It doesn't, I'm not, I don't feel emasculated no. because I get depressed sometimes. I don't I mean, connect the two at all. Like I just, a lot of people, do yeah and and that's that's what holds a lot of guys that's what keeps them stuck yeah in their depression it's like they won't talk about it publicly but they'll message me about it on instagram it's a miserable way to live it is yeah so like so it's but it's so it's fine yeah and all of a sudden it's you know and and you know what and when i met stacy i was for the first time so you know i was i was married before stacy but i was still kind of learning about myself and maybe in denial about some things about my mental health, 
which okay. is sort of didn't understand or like you just continue to learn and grow. Right. By the time that I met Stacy, I just told her straight up. I was like, Hey, I am depressed quite often. I think about suicide a lot. <laughs> a lot. And I, and especially back then, dude, 2016 was a rough year for me. I was yeah. super turbulent, you know, and I've, I've said like, I met Stacy, I met the right girl at the right time and I, and I read the right book and I really fucking leveled out. But yeah. I was Which on, book was it? The Ego is the Enemy That's by right. Ryan Holiday. Yep. Yeah. So I was doing, I was shaky in like mental health wise. Um, you know, like back then I remember I would like fucking cry on Facebook videos. You know, it was fucking weird, man. But I like, um, I, but I told Stacy, I was like, this is how I am. And she was like, okay, okay, we'll fucking, that's fine. We'll deal with it, you know? Right. And, and I would, you know, back then I would, or, you know, throughout our relationship, I just, I just tell her, Mm -hmm. I'm like, Hey, I'm like, I feel, I feel this coming on. I'm thinking about, yeah. And you know, like early on she was less worried. I think she's more worried now when I get like that than she was, which is, I think a common thing for people or cause like the weird thing about, so for me and I'm not, for me personally, I, I deal with depression. It's very strong mm-hmm. and thoughts of suicide. It's, right. it's, it's very strong, not all the time, but when it's there, it's strong and other people don't feel that. And so it doesn't, it's not a thing to them. It's like when I lost my leg, it was a big deal to the people around me, but it's not a big deal to the people around me anymore right? because their life goes on and they have their own fucking shit. And so they don't care, you know? And so it's a, it's a funny transition. So like, um, I guess that'll, that'll, here's another fucking point or a tip. Um, don't expect other people to give a shit and it's okay that they don't. It really is like they, they can understand, but don't expect somebody to fucking go out of their day to fix your shit. Right. It's your responsibility to fix your shit. And that's, that's something honestly that uh, my friend Sean Ensley started trying to teach me a long time ago. He tried to teach me that before I was ready to understand and learn it, but. Yeah, you kind of have to be in the right place to be able to accept yeah, the but, the but, help. But your mental health and your well being is your responsibility, and don't expect anybody else to cater to that, um, because the truth is they got their own shit. <laughs> they got their own shit, and you and 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 like so, like Stacy and I, we 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 recognize because she gets depressed too, mm-hmm. and she deals with anxiety. Her big thing is anxiety, okay? right? But I I recognize when she's going through her shit and I fucking dude, I'd never been with somebody who had panic attacks before. Yeah. You know, I was like, what the fuck is going on? But now I, but like now I have experience with that so I can help support her during those times. And she has experience with me and, and, um, my depression, but maybe we used to talk about it more because she was trying to understand. Right. Now she just understands. She has a better understanding of it. So maybe that's maybe, you know, um, has she gotten also to the place like where, where she accepts it as a condition of her existence? Kind of how it, like what you were talking about earlier with your depression, like her anxiety. And yeah. Stuff like she's like just like, I am an anxious person and I just like not trying I to think fi- so. I can't speak for her. Yeah. But I think so. It's just an know? interesting, it's an interesting, uh, at least to me, it's interesting because you can use that for positive things too. Like when people are trying to decide I'm a fitness person or yeah. whatever, and and the the second you just you recognize yourself as something, yeah. There's a power in that where yeah. you're like, oh, okay, cool. Dude, dude, it's exactly you know it's the you know Chad last week said the quote, if you don't like your circumstances, change your circumstances. Yeah. If you can't change your circumstances, change your mindset. Your mindset. That's exactly what it is. Like mm-hmm. I cannot, and and the truth is you can't either. And but some people just don't deal with this on this level. Some people are just not depressed. Right. Just not. Okay. And I, that's awesome. I don't fucking understand that. And like, um, (laughs) you know who I really enjoy his books and, and following it on Instagram, following him on Instagram is Jordan Peterson. Yeah. He, 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 I I really like how he says like, no, you shouldn't be surprised that so many people are anxious and depressed. Like that should be normal because life is fucking challenging. We have to know so much and do so many things that are just above our 
nature right that of course we should we 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 should be expected to be anxious and depressed and so some people just aren't but 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 like for me just you know um i can't change my circumstances i can't change the thoughts that come in my head i'm not and i like physically in control of what chemicals are released into my brain right at what time you know i try my best to control my shit. Yep. But um, I know when I when I feel it, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm in a depression. And so and and so when I'm and so for the last week, I'll tell you what I, I gave in Saturday. Usually I don't drink, right? Because uh, but but Saturday, but like and so I fucking blacked out on Saturday. I went for it. I knew, but I knew exactly what I was doing. I have a fucking lot of years experience with this. I know how to safely live with this shit okay right so like when when i you know i got fucking my there's still puke all over the toilet and the walls <laughs> in the bathroom like i did it right but i was like i'm tired sometimes you get tired of fighting it uh-huh man because you know if when you're when you're like you do your bit you know like okay you wake up monday you're fucking depressed you're like i'm I'm gonna do my best anyways and you do your best and you're still depressed and something happens and it fucking just fuels your fire and on tuesday you're still depressed. And you're like, fuck, I don't want to be depressed anymore. And you do your best. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You're fighting it. You're fighting it. You're yeah, fighting it. You're, you're doing your best. But you're still mentally fucking depressed. You get tired. Yeah. You get tired. And that's when, um, you know, that's 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 when you need to unplug. But for me, I knew like I knew what I needed. Like I just needed to fucking I just needed to fucking drink and feel. I just need but I can claws. do it safely. And I don't I mean and I mean safely. Yep. I didn't, um, I, and I felt good about it and I had a hangover for two days mm. and I was like, but I needed that, you right. know, <laughs> like I just needed <laughs> to get those feelings out. I, my brain wanted to feel. Yep. And so I felt, but uh, I don't recommend that because that's the dangerous thing. Go like, if you fucking are like inexperienced with depression and you mix it with alcohol, you're going to fucking put a gun to your head. Yeah. You are definitely going to put a gun to your head, but I, there was no, no weapons, no you know, I and I, I, I'm able to think about that stuff and not even come close to making any sort of moves towards suicide. Right. I just sit there and think about it. You know? Right. Well, you've been working at it for a long time to be mm-hmm. able to have those tools at your disposal to be and like, so, all right. Yeah. And so, you know, I've been working at it. So, like, I, I'm, I'm where I am now. So, like, people's question to me is, like, how do you live with depression? I guess I'm telling you. Like one of the things that we've talked about this with a lot of things is time, Mm -hmm. you know, and you just get more experienced with time, but you won't get more experienced if you're not paying attention. Right. If you're not actively working on not fixing yourself, not, not trying to avoid depression, but, but learning how to live and thrive with a mental illness right it's a mental illness you know and 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 when it comes on you 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 gotta you gotta know you gotta do your best and so here's another tip i've always used fitness we we've talked about this in the podcast like i've always used fitness as a coping mechanism a way to keep my head afloat but when i'm when i'm the most depressed maybe for like a week or so i lower my standards for my workouts like i still get my workouts in but i lift lighter I go a little slower yeah. and I don't judge myself because I'm obviously not going to do my best because <laughs> I'm not at my best. Right. You know, it's like having a broken arm, but you got a broken brain yep. instead. But it's important for me to move. It's important for me to continue to eat healthy and to exercise and to do the dishes and fold my laundry. Sometimes for me, the best thing I can do is remind myself that life is simple because one of my, you know, like when I say I turn, I turn mountains into, or what is it? Mountains Mo- and molehills. Well, well, molehills into mountains. You you do the opposite of what the saying is. <laughs> yeah, you okay. turn the molehills into mountains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I like any small annoyance for me just sets me off. Right. And so dude, like, especially, um, I get overwhelmed quite often. Like for what, what we do with work is wild, man. And it's, there's, there's never a guarantee, right? We, we, we are in charge of creating our own path here and it's awesome. Right. It's awesome. But but it comes with certain stresses. There, there's a lot of unknown overwhelming. And so my point is, um, that can be 
something that sets me off. Mm -hmm. And what I can do is, is do things that remind me who I am and that life is fucking simple. Like what is life really about? Or, you know, it's like, okay, Derek, you fucking like, what if you made $0 for the rest of the year, year, would your life be miserable or would you still love Stacy? Would you still love and play with your kids? You'd figure out shelter. Like, would right. it be so bad? They still, so like, like life is fucking easy. Life is easy, but a lot of us get overwhelmed by how fucking complicated it can be. And that's what, you know, like you, people make fun of me for my aversion to technology and my aversion to paperwork and things oh, yeah. like that. But these yeah. are things that legitimately set off my depression. And I know that there are things that I, I know that they are things that are going to make me depressed. And so like, right. so like I, I, I dip my toe in and do what I can when I can. But for me kind of focusing on the things like my coping mechanisms, yeah. man. So like, you know, so I, I always, it is, if I stop working out, I'm throing in the towel and I'm giving up. I mean, I'll, 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 I'll not work out for a day right. or something like that or a day or two, you know, a consciously skipping the gym to just mellow out and deal, let my head blow over, you know? Do you but, think, do you think when you work out, like, are you a big thinker while you're lifting or are you real focused on what you're doing? Um, I mean, do you know how to turn your brain off ever? Like, oh, you know? fuck no. 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 So there's always, Absolutely not. there's always an inner monologue. So today actually, so I, I, I did like, so, um, my, my workout this morning in it was 4,500 meters of rowing and that's a long time to just sit on yeah. the rower. And I told, uh, uh, my coach, I said, that's exactly what I needed. Cause there was other things too, but I just needed to sit there and do steady state movement. I needed to confront. So it's like, I was, I was, a I was, I was, uh, fucking manic depressed for a week. And then Saturday I just, I, I, you know, I just felt all my feelings. I got it out of my system. Yep. Sunday I re recuperated. Um, actually yesterday, um, I told my coach, I was like, Hey, I'm treating Tuesday as Monday. So yesterday I did a conscious don't work out, just chill, eat food. And then today I came back to my workout and I just, I had to confront it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, okay, the voices are there, they're there, they're there, calm down. And I focused on my breathing. Here's a dude. I started, um, I started fucking meditating. Good job. Recently. Like I, I have never, um, been big into meditation mm -hmm. for all the reasons that I fucking just made fun of other guys for, right. You know, when they like, it's too macho to not be right, sad right. or something about like, or for me, meditation is like, it hasn't spoken to me. It, it hasn't, hasn't yet or hasn't or, yet, but it's, okay. but it's, I guess, I think it's one of those things because I wasn't ready for it. Right. And now I'm, now I think I'm ready and I've been, I've been really, I've been really enjoying it. Um, what, but what it, kind of meditation do you do? Because so, I know there's a bunch of different kinds. Well, dude, I got this app called Calm. So Stacy has been Stacy's been doing meditation through an app, and fuck, I can't remember what app she uses. But so she's been doing it for a long time. She does okay. meditation and yoga okay. to 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 deal with her inner voices. And I use fitness and things like that, you know. But like like I said, like earlier. You know, I'm at the end of a rope. I need to find a new fucking rope. Right. Okay. So I'm I'm trying Med to find a new rope. Meditation sounds yeah. like a good rope. <laughs> it's worked mm -hmm. for other people. Mm -hmm. Well, dude, like, um, I was watching a TED talk, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and it was uh, I do that sometimes. I just sit there and watch TED talks instead of if I if I feel like just watching a stupid show on Netflix. Sometimes yeah. instead, I'll either watch Crash Course, okay, History on YouTube. Have yeah. you ever seen that? It's fucking no. awesome. Or uh, TED talks. Uh, but, uh, uh, there was a, a, a sciencey person talking about how meditation and exercise basically have the same positive benefits for the brain. I was like, all right, well, you know, so I, um, so for the last week I've been having trouble controlling my thought process. Like right. my thoughts have just been running away from me. And that seems to be what the point of meditation is, is to get it's that to under control. Reel them in. Okay. Not, not to perfection. Right. And to like accept and understand that you can't always accomplish that. But you, so like these motherfuckers, they're smart, dude. Cause they're like, <laughs> they're like, all right, let's just sit here and think for a minute. 
And then I'll just like try to be calm for a minute. But then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm worried right. and I'm panicking and I'm anxious. And then they come back and like, it's okay if you drift. I was like, motherfucker, how'd you know I was drifting? <laughs> they just know. <laughs> so anyways, I got this app called calm and there's a, there's a, a, there's different programs on it. And the program I'm doing, it's called how to meditate. Okay. So I just started right there. Like the basic like, yeah, entry it's like level. How to meditate. Introduction. Like, oh, fuck. Perfect. And then they also <laughs> like they also have uh um uh you know like a daily meditation and other things. They got they got these nighttime stories. Uh one of them, uh Matthew McConaughey narrates it. So no I, shit. I really want to listen to that. I don't know. Yeah. Like <laughs> but anyways, dude, so here's here's uh so fucking day one. I woke up I woke up at four in the morning. Like so like last week I wasn't sleeping, and usually or here's a big point. If you're depressed, sleep. Right. Whatever the fuck you got to do, go to fucking sleep. Do yep. not stay the fuck awake all goddamn night. That makes it like, worse. You're going to sleep poorly. You know, like your dreams are going to be all fucked up and stuff like that. But go your ass to bed. Yeah. Lack of sleep care. makes everything worse. Yeah. I don't care what you got to do. You need to go to sleep. I like Tylenol PM. If I'm depressed and not sleeping, I'll take extra Benadryl. Yeah. Um, and melatonin. I had a friend. uh yeah friend whose doctor was like um benadryl has kind of like a slowing effect similar to like volume so yeah like if you didn't have a value so tylenol it, pm has benadryl in it it's okay just, it's just tylenol and benadryl yeah and then you just i just call it popping some bennies i mean i don't i don't do that yeah i just call it popping bennies i get i have to stacy has to pop bennies before she flies yeah because she thinks she's gonna die and you're afraid of fucking dying in a plane crash too huh i don't like it you know i did better uh on the trip that we went to idaho yeah like i did a lot better on that on that trip than, than I had on before, but yeah, I'm generally don't like flying unless I have a parachute. Yeah. So dude, I'm, I'm I, this is, this is a, 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 a major point in my coping with depression sleep. I'm very protective of my sleep. I fucking defend it at all costs. I get it at all costs. Sometimes, you know, it's like if, if it's, if it's nine thirty PM and you have 10 things to do, Nope. You got one thing to do. You have to go to sleep. You know, 10, 11 o'clock, you yeah. know, it like, it like people are like, don't put off today or don't put off till tomorrow. What you can do today. Fuck that. Don't do today. What you can fucking do tomorrow. If it's cutting into your sleep. Okay. Like, you, you know, we got a lot of days left. We're going to be alive. Right. Pending any tragic accident. You know, um, if it's, if it's 10th, if you know, if it's, if it's in the evening, 8 PM for me is wind down time. Yeah. And so like I won't be on the internet much or if I am it's really lighthearted and if I'm not enjoying myself I'll get off. 8 p.m. is my wind down time. Till and when? Till I I try to go to bed between 10 and 11 o'clock. Okay. And then, you know, I used to wake up at 5, but now um now I sleep till about anywhere between 6 and 7 because of the boys. Yep. You know. Uh cuz I'm I'm a get up and go type person, yeah. but when the with the boys I can't get up and go. You know, and no, so I went to the you. child care, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyways, so like last week I wasn't sleeping well, I wake up at four in the morning. Um, and I was like, I fucking am already, I woke up at four in the morning and my mind was racing. I was like, God damn it. I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to try, I'm going to look into this meditation stuff. And Stacy had an app and I couldn't remember what it was. Anyways, I landed on this app called calm. Here's how I started my, I, I was like, so I was like, it was morning. I threw a fucking fat pinch of Copenhagen in. I went and took a shit and I started my first meditation process. <laughs> nice. And the dude was like, so I'm sitting there on the toilet. I got a fucking massive chew in. And so my <laughs> jaw is tight and stuff. He's like, find a comfortable place to sit. But I'd already been there for a while. So right. I was like, uh, I'm, I'm past comfort. Yeah. He's like, relax your jaw. I was like, I fucking can't do it. I was like, all right. Two strikes I mean, against I, me I, already. I, I fucking, I, I paused it. I started like, I paused it. I wiped my butt. I spit out my chew. I went and got in my bed and sat up and relaxed. And I was like, I'm, but, uh, but like, I think that's very fitting for me to yep. try my first meditation on the toilet with a right. fucking chew in, you know, a lot of great like, things. God damn it. I'm fucking there. dumb. You yeah. know? <laughs> like, well, like, of course that didn't go well, you fucking idiot. But I was, you know, I was like, it happened just naturally. And looking back, I was like, yeah, that's a very, that's a very Derek thing. But anyway, so 
if uh, if it's been five days since then, I've meditated three times, and I really need to make it a point of doing it every night because it's 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 I enjoy it. It's helping me. What's so, the What's the app do? Like as you're as you're running through your meditation, is it like giving you things to concentrate on? Or yeah, so there's um, you know, and the, it's it's cool. They play this like, is this too loud in the microphone? No. Nope. Anyway, dude, just um. They play like this, like watery music. Okay. And yes, he guides you through meditation. And Think about this, or yeah, mm-hmm. and I and I did a lot of this stuff, especially in that inpatient program that I was in yeah. at the VA years ago. Um, but I I just I didn't like it. So actually, I Googled meditation for men because I wanted something with like you know I really like <laughs> like uh, Scandinavian Viking music I and shit like manly that. Manly meditation. Yeah, like don't give me fucking waterfalls. I want to hear like war drums. Right. Like some war drunna yeah. or something like that. You know? I was like, wh- why isn't this? Maybe we shouldn't even talk about this because maybe this should be our thing. Meditation for men. This could be the next yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways. Like Viking chants. Yeah, turns out there's no fucking option for like Maybe maybe there's no maybe because there's no market for it like Not yet you know? oh yeah <laughs> but that'd be pretty cool you know but anyways it's uh it's it's working it makes me feel good nice um it 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 brings me some level of clarity even for a little bit yeah and then on this app um you know that's that's my how to but there's like a daily there's a couple if I need like an emergency fucking reset I just go to this app and and find something to meditate to it's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. So that that's a new thing for me. Always learning, man. It's always it's always it's always something new with uh uh um, living with depression. And so you know, uh, try to try to wrap this up here. It's like um the people when people write me the messages and ask me for help, they give me their laundry list of the things that are wrong in their life. Right. And it's not that it's not that I don't care, but I don't care. Like I don't care what made you feel a certain way if you feel a certain way you need to learn how to live with that yeah and i am not the person to teach you like here's here's here were my tips and things like that over the last hour i think i shared quite a few things that i do now or have learned but your first stop for your mental health is a fucking psychologist yeah you know and you can do a lot on your own you can do there's a there's a lot of books in here that i've read yep that have taught me about um living and coping um but uh, uh, like the the uh, the messages, I, I I don't know how to respond to to the messages about depression and things like that because it's fucking hard. It is never the fucking same, and it's not. And I don't. I think you know it's popular for for people on the internet to be like, you know, it's it's a, it's an easy answer for me to say, and I've said this before, and it is true. So it's like, Derek, what should I do when I'm depressed? I say, do the things you do every day anyways and that's true but it's a lot more fucking complicated than that and there's a lot more that goes into that it's yeah, very hard because it's sure. like derek what do you do when you're depressed i was like oh I, I do the same thing i do every other day it's just i'm in a different mood right you know? but i've learned how to actually fucking do that like when i'm depressed i, I hit my two workouts i hit all um of my food i hit all my water intake for the day though like and those are the things that are important to me basic my, level yeah, like yeah but, checkpoints but that's also like what i do with my life right like that's what i've that's my chosen profession you know and i and i'm not a shitty person to my wife because if i'm a little bit ill-tempered or i'd say like i'm sorry i'm like i'm overwhelmed i don't have patience things right like that you know but um i do the same thing i do every day but it's taken me a lifetime of fucking practice to be able to do that. And so if, if, if you're, um, if you're dealing with, um, depression and things like that, start learning about yourself, start learning about yourself. What makes you depressed? There's weird ass things, you know, there's weird ass things that make me depressed, Mm -hmm. weird ass things, but maybe you too. And it's hard to fucking, it's hard to know. And so, you know, um, uh, psychology, having a psychologist, they'll help you work through the fucking shit storm that is your brain and you need to have coping mechanisms. And that's the thing. Like I can't answer your fucking depression question because I don't know what you enjoy. Right. You are, you cannot fucking live my life. You would probably not enjoy my life. <laughs> you know? I have like, to work out how much <laughs> yeah. I can only eat what mm-hmm. fuck this. You have to figure out you 
But I guess like the main, like don't give up, don't quit, don't quit. It's like, it's a fucking process. Yeah. And it's I, a li- and I'm not there. So people are like, how did you, how did you learn? How did you do this? It's like, I'm not done. I'm literally not done. Like when I'm confronted with a new depression, I'm back at day one. Right. But now I have tools in my toolbox and I, and I know how to not let myself get overwhelmed to the point where I'm completely out of control. Yeah. But when I'm annoyed that I'm in such little control, that's when I know I'm at the end of a rope and I need to find a new one. Is control a big thing for, for like exacerbating your depressions? Like if you feel like you're in control or not in control or anything like that? No, it's just a, it's like, it's like a radar. Oh me. yeah, my level of control is my radar and how it. bad I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, yeah. When it, and so like like last week it was just like brrr, nonstop thoughts, 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 thoughts. Never one clear um, or focused and just bouncing all over yeah. the place. And I'm like, when there was like absolutely no control, I'm like, I, this is bad. Yep. This is the real deal. This isn't. This is. This needs to be taken seriously. Yep. And it needs to be addressed. You know, and it's not no boohoo fucking bullshit no, or something like it's that. Time it's time like, out on everything else. It needs to be Let's taken seriously. It. Needs to be taken addressed. You know, and I think, and 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 I and I really, I fucking really like saying that. It's like I'm not at the end of my rope. I'm at the end of a rope. This right? one, and I need to find a new rope. Yep. And like you know, um, I'm 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 still I'm working back towards um, doing the things that I enjoy well, but I'm adding new things. And one of these new things is is meditation. And 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 uh, a stretching routine at night, just to sort of like stay calm, yeah, stay focused, stay and, loose, and yeah. Especially right now with all the weird things, there's so much from the outside world coming into our brains right now. Oh my god! And it's, and it's hard. Facebook's bad. Yeah, one of the things that you know, when I don't have focus on my goals mm-hmm. and my life, I I tend to go a little bit crazy. And so I'm taking the time to focus on me. So I remember who the fuck I am. I remember what I'm doing. I remember why I'm doing it. And all of a sudden I have, I have, I have a, I have focus. I have a vision. I have a plan. I can move forward. Yeah. And so that's my fucking, and you know what? Like I, 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 I think I'm on, I'm on the way out of this depression. Mm -hmm. It'll, it'll, it'll be there again someday, but every time you learn something new, you know, and, uh, and and it and it was a long hard road to get to the point where I was just not like you know where where it's like I can think about killing myself but not have any fucking fear that I'll actually do it right but it's an annoying thing that I have to live with and stuff like that but you just accept it and hey like, fuck man we're thinking yeah. about this shit again yeah. god mm-hmm. damn it yeah. all right fine yep yep so that's that's as best as I can answer that question and um I hope some of it made sense I hope some of it was helpful. <laughs> But that's that's the that's that's why that question is difficult to answer. Yeah, because it's just a bag of fucking shit. Yep, life is a bag of fucking shit, and I don't fucking know anything else. Anybody, or I don't know any. I don't know much. Somebody else doesn't, or something like that. You know, but I have been at this a long time. I do. I'm, I'm proud of how far I've come. Yeah, with it. You know, For sure, dude. Yeah, you know, and. uh and, and, and don't be afraid. I'll just like, lastly, like, don't be afraid to fucking talk about it. If somebody like accuses of you of complaining or wanting pity or something like that, don't, don't ever apologize for being honest. Right. <laughs> being honest feels fucking good. Yeah. Being honest feels fucking good. Don't ever apologize. Um, for, for being honest and maybe find I need someone to take, better to listen to. Yeah. Maybe I need to take my own advice here is like, just don't, don't care about those people. They get yeah. my goat sometimes too, but, um, Remember the good people in the world. There's there's people that will understand and relate and support me in this. And uh and and I love you guys and, and you matter to me, not the other people. So I think that's it for uh for today. I think uh I'm I'm sweaty. I, <laughs> it's, I am, I'm, it's hot in here. Yep, I'm my back is basically just like <laughs> stuck to the chair. Uh, I shouldn't have worn, but dude, I like I when I when I go to my psychology session, I wear long sleeves and stuff. I like bundle that. up. Yeah, mm-hmm. like we're gonna just like, make yeah. this a fucking sauna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dramatic and I like to feel. I think that's gonna do it for this week, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Savage Saturdays. Um, next week. I'm thinking we're finally going to get my mom on. We've been talking shit about it for a long time. We have. Yeah. Yeah, we got to do it. Nice. So we're going to give Granny a call. We'll catch you next week. Guys, bye. We love you.